Hello my soccer universe to the preview of the potentially most exciting championship in Europe this time around uh, with five, six, potentially seven contenders for the title uh, at the moment it's really not clear yes last season we saw a solo from uh, these guys in Napoli and yes I decided for once to not wear a Milan jer jersey but go with the champions for my preview video it could happen this season again with a solo but it also could cook a bit of a title race every team has some um, strengths and weaknesses and it's really really hard to gauge where it, where it is going for instance starting at napoli you could keep the most important players together except for kim min jay and it's not quite clear who will replace him so they will have a little bit of a hole on defense the other side you could extend potentially uh, it's on its way oziman you have quara still um, and the other thing is you lost your coach in Spalletti and I have to say the appointment of Rudy Garcia yes he has a good standing in Italy but this was m really underwhelming let's put it this way it was really an underwhelming uh, appointment and I don't know where this is going uh, of the other contenders I mean the transfer business in Italy was more or less could you sell a player to the Premier League for a whole lot of money if yes then you could unlock and you got a few uh, players in case in point my team Milan they sold Sandro Tonali uh, which was kind of the third stamp <laughs> you lose Ibra you lose Maldini and then suddenly you lose to 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 Tonali so the beginning of the tra transfer window uh, the mood was down but since then a lot of players came in and there's a little bit more excitement but I still see quite some holes I mean the main transfer of course Kristen Pulisic uh, who will be could, could, could be exciting I think the uh, midfield with Loftus Cheek and uh, especially Reinders from AZ they, that looks really really cool I think with Noah Okafor you got another option for the wing uh, who could also play the central striker I still see some holes in defense I still see some uh, you know a little bit of uh, defensive midfielder and especially a striker to relieve Giroud who has done his service but I think a little bit more needs to happen but yeah with the spending spree many people expect a lot of things from Milan and the preseason though did not go that well but you know never judge preseason so if I look at Inter it's a little bit the opposite yes they got some money from Onana but Onana was probably the most important players out there the one that got them to the Champions League final and yes Milan still could lose other players I mean uh, no doubt, doubt about that uh, they got a decent replacement with Jan Sommer but he's no Onana we saw how he was struggling in uh, Munich but I always rated Sommer um, so yeah they got uh, Fratesi an Italian in uh, but then you have the whole Lukaku saga which is a whole part on itself where Lukaku seemingly was going for Inter then he didn't return their calls Chelsea wants to get rid of him suddenly he's fronting with Juve whose fans abused him and he said he will never go to Juve he was also rumored to at one point that he might be the solution for Milan please not we don't need another goalkeeper we have uh, Mike Mad Magic Mike or oh, the opposition doesn't need another goalkeeper because as good as Lukaku can be, he's also probably one of the clumsiest strikers out there. So for that reason, yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff happening at Inter. They also lost Borozovic, which I think that could hurt. Uh, but I think they also got uh, some interesting players in uh, with, you know, Aslani from Empoli, who has been uh, really good. Uh, they also, as I said, uh, Fratesi and Juan Cuadrado from Juve. Maybe maybe speaking of Juve it's also very much in flux you got Timothy Weah in you got rid of the likes of Bonucci so there's also a big rebuild uh, in it's really hard to judge Juve however based on the last season where they actually were quite good under Allegri uh, being very defensive but still rather capable and they might actually get from Sassolo um, Berardi Let's see, let's see. I would say of the big three, they might be the ones that actually, actually could take the title back from Napoli. And then there's Roma, uh, who also had kind of a quiet summer. But then, you know, getting Paredes and especially Renato Sanchez. You got also Christensen from Leeds for defense. What is Mourinho brewing up 
there. I mean, you need some goals probably more from Tammy Abraham and so on. Um, Lazio is an unknown quantity. The other team that was relatively active in the transfer market was, of course, Atalanta, uh, thanks to the selling on of Erasmus Hoyland to Manchester United. So United and Chelsea kind of a little bit funding the Serie A at the moment. Uh, with that, they got the Catalare in from Milan, which I found interesting. Uh, to say the least, because, you know, he was not uh, going anywhere, unfortunately, although I had really high uh, hopes, but they also got Skamaka from West Ham, and that's his make-or-break uh, season. They got Kolasinac from Marseille, you know. This Atalanta team could be dangerous. They looked really good last season, they could be up there. So you, And then uh, you have the like of Fiorentina, who also made some interesting signings and Lazio, it is rather, rather, rather open. I would say everything up until Fiorentina, Fior 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 those are eight teams that will contend for the European spots. Uh, what I think speaks for Juve is that they're not playing in Europe. They really can only concentrate on a league. That's why I have kind of earmarked Juve as a potential. It's really hard for me to judge Napoli. I could see them hang, um, going on like that, but not good. I don't know about Inter like at all and Milan also is for me a very unknown quantity although it is exciting to see many new players however the last time it was so exciting uh, I think it was in 17 and then it went really really pear-shaped so I am also a little bit apprehensive there especially since I see holes in the squad. I think the likes that could you know also play a little bit of a desire the likes of Torino, Bologna, Monza could Monza actually get in there? I, I, I doubt it. Udinese, Sassuolo, I think those are teams that will have nothing to do with re re relegation, but are not really able to move further up as well. Relegation, though, is also quite the wide field. Um, Empoli, I think, starts the relegation uh, battle with Salerno, who have now twice escaped. Could they do it a third time or, or, or will they get more stable? Elas Verona had, after a couple of good runs this time, they barely escaped last time. It was only thanks to a playoff, so uh, that is also an interesting one to see in which way they will turn. Um, we also have Lecce, who for once managed to escape relegation, but can it do it twice in, in, in a row? And then we have the three promoted teams, where Genoa actually looks potentially the most interesting one. I mean, this is a team that Everyone would say it's anyway one that belongs in Serie A, uh, thanks to the history being the oldest club team. For Rosinone and Cagliari are more or less unknown quantities. I actually think that Cagliari could do something, but maybe, you know, with Ranieri. Let's see, Frosinone, yes, they were really good in Serie B, but does this translate to Serie A? After all that, let's look at the expected final standings. You see it is Napoli, Inter, Milan, Juve, that my model that's based on odds and that is based on the ELO ratings. But you see it is relatively tight, although it's head-to-head -head with Napoli and Inter. I just don't know what to think about Inter. It's really, really, really hard, but I can say this about any other team. The Roman team slightly behind Napoli and the uh, big three, if you would like. Um, it also shows that Fiorentina is probably the last team that can have hopes for a European spot. Probably just outside, they're just below. And then there's this midfield. And exactly as I said, Empoli, Santana, Elas, Genoa, Frosinone, Lecce and Cagliari going down. That would be three southern teams, which would be really, really, really sad, I have to say. Uh, the first set of fixtures is unfortunately happening right during my vacation, but uh, at least they, they do it like they have. Have it also done, done in summer, you have always late fixtures, so you have double uh, slots, uh, 6.30 and 8.45 on Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Um, I think the opening fixtures, Sassolo, Atalanta, that's kind of, you know, a hipster's duel, but that might be interesting uh, for tradition. Genoa against Fiorentina is an inter, inter uh, open at home to Monza. Napoli champions have to go to Frosinone and Milan at Bologna. That is m probably not the easiest uh, game out there. Milan anyway have not the easiest start because we have, uh, uh, there's a Roma and the Derby are coming up in rounds three and four. That is not easy, like at all. So yeah. Where do you see Serie A going this season? I would be really interested in that. Uh, who do you think will win it? Who will go, 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 go down? Top four. I would really love to hear your opinion. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!